A few videos ago, I made this one here. Killshot, the five year anniversary and how it affected MGK. And that sure is a daisy of a video if you wanna go check it out. After this one, of course. But that sparked this conversation. Where the f is Eminem? In a few days, it will officially have been three years since Eminem dropped the full length project. More on that later in this video. And I know what you're thinking, this guy cannot still be making MGK versus Eminem, Rap Devil versus Killshot videos, can he? And to that I say, I absolutely am. Because rap beefs are my thing. And this has been the biggest rap beef of my entire existence as a content creator. It's also what launched my channel into being able to do this full time. So the majority of my audience is from this beef. And I like to throw them a little nugget every now and again. It's also one of the only beefs that we actually get to see the After Effects play out in real time. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Rap Devil five years later and seeing how it exactly affected Eminem and his career. And the answers just may surprise you. But first, let me remind you of how exactly we got into this beef in the first place. <gasps> Starting in 2012, 22-year-old Machine Gun Kelly tweeted this tweet right here about Eminem's 16-year-old daughter calling her, quote, hot as f There was then a reported conversation between MGK and Eminem's team to delete the tweet and all was squashed. Just kidding, obviously fucking not. Congratulations, you played yourself. In the following years, due to a slow growth, MGK believed as if his career was being halted behind the scenes by Eminem because of this tweet. An example of this is MGK's rumored Shade 45 ban, which is one of the most popular radio stations owned by, coincidentally, Eminem. After finding out that he was supposedly banned from Shade 45, he went on a different rap radio station, Power 106 FM, and expressed his grievances in a freestyle there. I'm my favorite rapper alive, since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45, I wonder. A while later, in March of 2018, he was featured on the Tech 9 song, No Reason, and subtly dis Eminem with the famous You Just Rap, You're Not God line. Which, according to Eminem in this Sway Calloway interview, was the straw that broke the camel's back. But then when you get on Tech Nine's album, and you start sending shots. In response to the shots on No Reason, a few months later in August of 2018, Eminem released a surprise album called Kamikaze, in which he directed shots towards MGK on a song called Not Alike. But you just the one to be gonna, hey, like you was gonna do something. But next time, you don't gotta use Tech 9 if you wanna come at me with a submachine gun. On the night of the release, MGK is seen listening to the song and celebrating, as we all know what was coming next. Rap Devil! And before we continue forward, this video will be copyright claimed because of some audio snippets, and I play music video visuals as well, and I feel like it kinda takes away from the video to omit those. So, to counteract that, Welcome Love, man, it's time to go. Strap your boots up and then grab your phone. Rage Shadow Legends is waiting for you to show. Hop up inside of arenas in the battle of your foes. With amazing graphics and your opponents, they'll get the ass kicked. Lay him down to sleep, I ain't talking about a mattress. 800 different chants from several factions. 80 million downloads worldwide about that action. Billions of ways to customize the visual chance up. Tons of bosses to take on, so go get amped up. It's free to play, so you'll never have a payment. It's tons of fun and it's constantly updated. So download it now, you better be quick. Cause for a limited time, you're gonna get a bunch of gifts. So slip the link down low, or scan this QR code, and you'll be battling with the best it's time to go winter is upon us take advantage of the icy cold frostbitten weather outside by stacking up on some icy cold champions from raid for example sir nicholas here he's a void legendary champion so he's already top tier but his skill multipliers let him hit hard as f or my guy Gorga the Breaker. He is easily one of the hardest hitting champions in the game with his attack stat already over 1600. One thing that I think is dope about Raid is that they constantly keep their game updated and their latest update is the Cursed City update. This is one of Raid's biggest features since the Doom Tower with 100 stages to complete, including stages where you'll need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. And there's even a Christmas story event. There's a bunch of mini games to solve and you get a chance to win both in-game and real life prizes ranging from epic and legendary champions to Amazon gift cards. All you gotta do to join the event is go to RaidXmas.com. And if you haven't played Raid yet, you'll get two epic champions. The first champion is Lightsworn, who is a very strong epic champion from the Sacred Order. And then the second epic champion is Juliana, who after reaching level 15 is an epic champion and a boss killer. All you gotta do is click the link in the description or scan this big ass QR code on the screen and you can get those dope rewards. And once you're in the game, busting heads, find me under Crypt the Rapper. Let's go play together. And again, thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Rap Devil gained nearly 14 million views in its first day of release, landing on the the number one spot of YouTube trending for several consecutive days. It's currently sitting at over 374 million views, placing it in the top 1,200 most viewed YouTube videos of all time. It even rose all the way up to number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Throughout the track, several disses are made about Eminem's age, his own insecurities about his own music, and the infamous weird beard. Yep. Still not letting him get a pass for that one. This fucking beard is weird. This fucking beard is weird. Rap Devil was talked about so much in the following days that when you googled the term rap, Rap Devil came up over Rap God. Which is insane considering Rap God had already amassed over 1 billion views on YouTube. And how did this affect Eminem? Well, to put it simply, 
It pissed him off. In the two weeks leading up to his inevitable response, Eminem did a four-part docuseries, mostly about his surprise album Kamikaze, as well as some other rap history conversation with Shade 45 radio personality Sway Calloway. But a decent chunk of this interview was Eminem addressing the entire situation with MGK, explaining the several different factors that led to their discrepancy, finishing it off with this. Now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. And every time I do that, it makes that person as, as irrelevant as people say I am, am in hip hop. Yeah. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, I want to destroy him, but I also don't want to make him bigger. I'll leave it at that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do at this point right now. Well, he did this. Again, check out the video at the top of the screen if you want to know more about how it affected MGK and his career path, because it most certainly did. In the following days to Kill Shot, MGK would then reply via tweets and in several interviews stating that the song was not worth his response. Six for me, dog. So six for you? Executed Kill Shot was, was a leg shot. I had a clip ready. I heard Kill Shot and I put that back in the holster. And that seemed to be the end of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Eminem would go on to finish 2018 on a literal high note by performing his hit song Venom on the 103rd floor of the Empire State Building on Jimmy Kimmel Live. In the following year, leading up to the one year anniversary of the beef, Eminem would lend some notable features, including Rainy Days with Boogie. I promise not to cry crocodile tears if you end up shocked at my lyrics. Remember the name with Ed Sheeran and 50 Cent? The state would have it, yeah. Became an addict. Funny, cause I had pop a pill. Bang with Conway the Machine. That was back when I smoked cannabis. Man, but it was tough, cause I was a fan of his, so it sucked to hand him his ass, but and most notably homicide with logic, which officially has gone double platinum. Getting washed like a thicker, thicker, like bathing, young hova. I know hit us like Yankees. Kamikaze officially sold around 430,000 units in its first week, opening at number one on the Billboard 200 charts, making it his ninth consecutive album to do so. And just before the 2019 year would come to a close, Eminem would feature on the song Lord Above with Fat Joe. Remember this song for later on. I let her chop my balls off too, for I lost to you, Nick. Rolling on into January of 2020, Eminem would surprise release yet another project, his first since the beef nearly a year and a half earlier, Music To Be Murdered By. This album would sell 270,000 copies in its first week, earning Eminem his 10th consecutive studio album to chart at number one on the Billboard 200, becoming the only artist in history to have 10 consecutive albums debut at number one. Godzilla, featuring Juice World, the highest stream song on the album, is currently certified triple platinum. On the song Unaccommodating from the album, Eminem speaks on the MGK K beef saying that the war is now over. But when they ask me, is the war finished with MGK? Of course it is. I cleanse them of his mortal sins. I'm God and the Lord forgive. In February of the same year, Eminem was invited to perform Lose Yourself for the 92nd Academy Awards. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on a sweater already. And by March, music to be murdered by had already reached certified gold status. The album would then be thrust into platinum status with the release of the Godzilla music video, which currently has over a half a billion views on YouTube. Many people try to say that this was a cash grab from Eminem, being as Juice World, the artist featured on the song, passed away just a few months prior to its release. However, it has been confirmed by Juice World's photographer that he did indeed make this hook for Eminem for this particular song. In July of the same year, Eminem would feature on Kid Cudi's song Adventures of Moon Man and Slim Shady, speaking on the current racial issues in the US as well as the pandemic that seemed to have the world by the nutsack. Now I'm in a fucking casket from you coughing. And in September, Eminem would once again pop up on Big Sean's Friday Night Cypher. But even if I would've went the indie route, what? I don't have any doubt. To close out the year, in December of 2020, Eminem would yet again surprise release another album, his second of the year the deluxe version of Music To Be Murdered By with 16 brand new tracks. This deluxe album would receive 80,000 first week sales and debut at number three on the Billboard 200 as a deluxe album. Moving on into 2021, Eminem remained relatively quiet on the scene in the first half of the year, but appeared on a number of features in the second half of the year, including EPMD2 with Nas, it's like Christmas, you don't wanna make the claws come out, y'all should call yourself Santa, Plus none of y'all are real. Walk through with Grip, and come back vengefully to shoot them bullies who clown you in elementary school. Last one standing with Sky Tyler Gray, Polo G, and Mosey. But all you see is the fame and the millions. You don't see the strength of resilience. And last but not least, Gospel with Dr. Dre. And God's my alias, so if I don't have faith in me, then it basically makes me an atheist. And to finish out the year in October, he was invited to perform alongside his longtime idol, LL Cool J, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony. Eminem. LL Cool J is hard as hell. To begin 2022, he dropped a featured verse on Corday's song Parables, the remixed version. And that's the reason I'm in my Louis Vuitton. What am I? And in February of the same year, he performed at the Super Bowl halftime show. Arguably one of the best halftime shows there's ever been. Definitely top five with Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and Anderson Pack was also there banging on the drums. <laughs> He 
would continue on the rest of the year to release The King and I with CeeLo Green for the Elvis movie soundtrack. Lose weight, shoes, one missing the shoelace to it. Finally release a song with Snoop Dogg called From the D to the LBC. That's how I know that I'm in the studio with the doggy. Put out Curtain Call 2, his second greatest hits compilation album. Oh, and not to mention, get inducted into the f***ing Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I realize what an honor it is right now for me to be up here tonight. And as far as for 2023, he again has remained silent for the first half of the year, but then featured on The Realist with his newly signed artist Easy Mill. Like a meteor hit it, well, then went Melly Mel. We lost his asteroids. And most recently, as of a few days ago, featured on the Juice World song, Lace It. I ain't lecturing you, but man, just be careful when you roll it up, lace it. So from the outside looking in, Rap Devil didn't do jack sh no, but in all seriousness, it really didn't affect Eminem's trajectory whatsoever. What it did affect was the trajectory of rap. Before Rap Devil, especially in the 2010s leading up until its release, you basically had zero people going after Eminem on a song. Eminem is Eminem. He's, if you notice in hip hop, Eminem is the only rapper that, that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. Even when I was going at 50 and, you know, and... You know, me and Dre wasn't seeing eye to eye, man. I stayed away from the white dude. Despite the hundreds of disses and name drops throughout the years, it basically seemed as if Eminem was untouchable. If he disses you, sit back and take it and move on. I even remember being a kid looking it up to see if anyone had thought about trying to diss Eminem because it just felt like an unfathomable concept. It's like challenging Jordan to a one-on-one, -on -one, Tiger Woods to stroke play, John Jones to a UFC fight where you can use 90 degree elbows. It's just a can of whoop ass waiting to be unloaded with zero that you can do about it. But Rap Devil? was like hitting a full court shot to get three points on Jordan. Getting a hole in one to take a stroke away from Tiger. Landing a takedown on John Jones to steal a round. And once people saw that and saw Eminem give attention to that, holy f did it open a can of worms. All of a sudden you had people coming out of the woodworks to take some shots of their own. Just like in Eminem, we had a lot of people talking about, is Eminem a guest in the house of hip hop? You motherfucker right he is. Wow. You slept with your adopted sister Kim and had a child and sucked your uncle Ronnie's dick with a smile. I'm kinda like an undertaker, you know I get it in. All I need is a shovel and a bitch named Eminem. Oh. And, and, and I used to think Eminem was better than me. So what you saying right he now? Not, <laughs> He not. He's not. Check your man, come and look at your brain, cause I think that Eminem is popping pills again. Eminem, the great white hope, could be labeled as one of the top 10 rappers ever. I don't think so. You don't think Eminem Hold is on, one of the best jump. rappers of all time? No non-African can ever be the best of anything African. The beef with Lord Jamar had already been brewing before Rap Devil as seen as some shots in the Kamikaze album, but all Rap Devil did was bring this to the forefront of the conversation once again. I know that I specifically was even unaware of Lord Jamar's statements at the time because not a whole lot of attention had been given to it. But now with Rap Devil, you had a whole big nest of people flocking, searching this new Eminem diss. And due to that, they get recommended these Lord Jamar interviews about Eminem being a white rapper and a guest in hip hop. Just like in Eminem, we had a lot of people talking about, is Eminem a guest in the house of hip hop? You motherfucking right he is. Then all of a sudden, some people hear this statement and agree with it, and now a whole new branch of opposition is formed from that specific angle. Honestly, the Eminem being a white rapper debate has always been an asterisk to his career for a lot of people, but it most certainly has hit its high point in these last five years. And as I just showed, Rap Devil acted as a fuel to this fire. Key point and example, just a few days after Rap Devil was released, Nick Cannon was on a podcast episode of Expeditiously with T.I., and it was there that he was asked about the beef that he had with Eminem a decade prior. Nick Cannon went on to then explain that he was ready to fight Eminem over the comments that he made about his ex-wife, Mariah Carey. A decade prior! It was a boxing... I was like, I was, I was like, whatever he want to do, I'm with it. But if you've ever seen Marshall Mathers in person... He's not someone that looked like he really wants mm. to smoke with most. This obviously was not just a coincidence. This was purely released because Rap Devil had opened the floodgates. In response to this interview, Eminem threw some shots at his feature verse for Fat Joe's last album on a song called Lord Above that I mentioned earlier. I let her chop my balls off too for I lost to you, Nick. This would then create a domino effect, which I arguably think is the funniest thing that's happened out of all of this. Because just a few days later, Nick Cannon would team up with the Wild and Out crew to release The Invitation, where Nick would reiterate disses that had been around for 20 years. Call Kim, somebody get Haley. After roughly 16 hours of no response, Nick Cannon and the Wild and Out crew grew angsty and would release another diss track called Pray For Him. Damn, and what you like five minutes away from 70? Again, there was just some more redundant Eminem disses, but some of them were actually kind of nice. Give Eminem fours and knock him out at Jordan 7. Later that day, Eminem would respond with a few tweets of his own and that would be the end of it. Just kidding, obviously, f*** not. Congratulations, 
you played yourself. After 10 days of no actual disresponse or an acceptance of this invitation, Nick Cannon would ride solo and resend that invitation with the song cleverly titled The Invitation Cancelled. We let you be a guest in this house, but now you cancel. This song is filled with Nick Cannon race baiting and attempting to cancel Eminem and just saying some really outlandish stuff. You the KKK of this generation. But at least this is where it would end. Just kidding, obviously fucking not. Congratulations, you played yourself. Even as recently as two months ago, four years later, Nick Cannon is still throwing random shots his way. And all I need is a shovel and a bitch named Eminem. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll do some anniversary videos about this beef. It just sucks that it's literally three bad Nick Cannon diss tracks and two Eminem tweets. I have made a video on each of these three diss tracks that are hilarious, and I invite you to watch them when this video is over. And don't worry, I won't cancel the invitation like some people. But regardless of what you think about these diss tracks, the response to Rap Devil specifically was so eye opening that it made people like Nick Cannon feel like he could rap against Eminem. That should say something. Over the following year of 2020, there would be some more Lord Jamar interviews about Eminem's album Music To Be Murdered By, where he said nobody is listening to that album, but then proceeds to quote the entire chorus about the 12th track on that album. I, I hate my, my stepdaughter. That shit rocks. Even Snoop Dogg, of all people, would chime in saying that he doesn't think Eminem is a top 10 rapper of all time. Eminem, the great white hope, could be labeled as one of the top 10 rappers ever. I don't think so. Luckily and thankfully, Eminem and Snoop would squash this beef, which makes me happy because that was a very sad time for me. But again, all of this seemed to be coming out of nowhere. Or was this coming because there was this false sense of security that you can now talk about Eminem? In 2021, we randomly got one of the stupidest diss tracks of them all by a rapper named As Is, who used to be in a rap group called The Outsiders with Eminem back in the early 90s. You slept with your adopted sis Kim and had a child and sucked your Uncle Ronnie's dick with a smile. This track got zero response and recognition from Eminem and As Is had to resort to battling YouTube rappers as a last resort. But again, Rap Devil gave these rappers this false sense of security that they could just throw these disses out there and they'll get some sort of notoriety out of it excluding snoop dogg obviously his was more of a strong opinion that just seemed to happen in the middle of all this out of nowhere you remember earlier in this video when i showed you a clip of this rapper the game saying this about eminem eminem is eminem he's if you notice in hip-hop eminem is the only rapper that that nobody ever wants a problem with including myself man eminem is like the most lyrically insane even when i was going at 50 and you know and you know, me and Dre wasn't seeing eye to eye, man. I stayed away from the white dude. Well, in 2022, he would say this. And, and, and I used to think Eminem was better than me. So what you saying right he now? He not. He not. <laughs> He's not. You cannot tell me that Rap Devil did not have a direct correlation in this man thinking this way now. He would even go on to release Black Slim Shady to show everyone that he was indeed better than Eminem and would fail miserably at that as depicted in this video of mine. Again, hilarious. But the worst part about all of this is that it was completely unwarranted. Eminem did not say a word about Snoop Dogg, as is, or the game, but the way the culture had shifted, their need to speak up became too overwhelming to hold it in. Even as recently as August of 2023, the first ever Rap Hall of Famer Melly Mel threw some shots at Eminem in this interview, again, circling a back around to the Eminem not being in the top 10 rappers of all time because he's white. But he's white. He's white. Eminem would then respond to this interview with a small little shot on his song The Realist with his newly signed artist Easy Mill. Like a meteor hit it, well, then with Melly Mel, we lost his asteroids. And then Melly Mel would respond with a diss track of his own, really hyping it up as something dope, only for it to suck. Ass. Check your man, come and look at your friend, cause I think that Eminem is popping pills again. All of these diss tracks that I've mentioned happened as a result of Rap Devil giving them this false sense of confidence that they can now go at Eminem. And as a result of that, they made Rap Devil sound way better. When Rap Devil was released, the majority of people viewed it as a pretty middle of the road diss. It had some cool lines in it here and there, but it also had some weird beard lines. This fucking beard is weird. This fucking beard is weird. But the sample size that we had to compare it to was virtually non-existent, so we didn't know how an Eminem diss track was supposed to sound. But now that we have all these new diss tracks going at Eminem, Rap Devil has quickly surfaced as by far the best of these new diss tracks. And every time a new diss track is dropped, people search Eminem diss. And what happens? Rap Devil pops up at the top, only making the song bigger and bigger as the years go by and as more people diss Eminem. Again, the domino effect. The most recent nugget involving Eminem comes from a guy named Dr. Umar, who I don't even fucking know, but is getting a ton of response for saying Eminem can't be top anything in rap because he's white, and nobody white can be a top anything that is African. No non-African 
can ever be the best of anything African. I don't think all the racial talk stems from Rap Devil, but the topic of Eminem disses do, and this topic comes up all the time. Actually, I don't know what is causing this racial talk to be so exponential this year, but it really needs to stop. It's super counterproductive. You're just pinning people against each other. Like, what the fuck is the point? Anyway, it's just crazy to think that Rap Devil, of all things, is the spark that all of these people needed to let this stuff go. I almost feel like this is why we haven't gotten an Eminem album in three years. Eminem has said all that he needs to say regarding regarding these topics and he knows that every time he mentions them and every time I do that it makes that person as as irrelevant as people say I am am in hip hop yeah. I make them bigger so if we never get an Eminem album again I blame Rap Devil, but hopefully another one is on the cusp of a surprise release. But that's all for this video. Please subscribe if you want to check out more videos like these. They take a very long time to create. I've actually been working on this video for over a month, but the original computer that I was working on completely crapped itself, so I had to start over again on this one. So it would mean a lot if you liked it, shared it, did anything that YouTube tells you to do about it. I'm actually an artist myself. That is my primary occupation, so it would be dope if you checked out any of my music. There is something there that you would like, okay? There, there's something. All right, I make a lot of cool stuff. Shout out to Raid for sponsoring this video. Once again, scan the QR code on the screen to start playing for free. And shout out to all you lovely sons of for watching this video. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, my, 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 my.